as I was about to say, my name is Jason Parker and welcome back to this channel about magic. In this video, I'm continuing my reactions to the first episode of the new season of Fool Us, where in which they have two-time previous Fool Us winners. All the magicians in this first episode have fooled Penn and Teller twice before. And in this video, we're talking about Andrei Shunishka, a magician from the Czech Republic. And I think I may have seen one of his previous performances before. I think. I remember he had, if it's the right guy, I remember he had a really quirky sense of humor. By the way, I don't know if any of you guys have checked Google Maps recently, but if you look for the Czech Republic, you're gonna see this, Czechia. Apparently, and I don't know if I have this exactly correct, but there was some kind of disagreement between the president and the prime minister, and I think the president thought that Czechia sounds more romantic. Anyway, it was a surprise to me when I was looking around Google Maps and I was like, where's the Czech Republic? Where did it go? So comment below, which do you prefer, Czechia or Czech Republic? Oh, and by the way, one more thing about Andre is that he also makes and sells a deck of playing cards called the Butterfly Deck, or Butterfly Playing Cards. Anyway, they're a beautiful design, and I think they would benefit magicians as well, so it's something to check out if you're interested. I'll put a link to his website in the description below. But anyway, let's go ahead and check out his performance and see if you can fool Penn and Teller for a third time. No one could have predicted that I would fool Penn and Teller the first time I was on this show. And yet, I did, with a little help from my guru. And to fool them twice? Impossible. Without a new secret method. My guru told me that the only way I would have the, the mental acuity to perform this miracle is to eat the beetle. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> to attempt the superhuman feat of fooling Penn and Teller for a third time, of course, I had to search out my guru but I arrived at his hideaway too late. He was gone, risen to another magical realm. And all he left me was a box containing his most treasured possessions. I like this guy. He's very creative and quirky and funny. In fact, I Googled him and it seems like he's uh, an actor as well as a magician. Comment below if any of you have seen him perform in a TV show or movie before. These two photographs and a final fooling secret. Please welcome back world beater and bug eater, Andre Pshinishka. Allow me to demonstrate a new trick in the everlasting spirit of my guru from Carpathia. On the back of those two photos I found in my guru's lair, he gave me the secret to fooling Penn and Teller for a third time. To my disbelief, he explained that everything I did on my previous two appearances on this stage was part of his master plan for my third success tonight. He also explained that, as before, I must do a card trick. Or, as we say in my native tongue in Czech Republic, <laughs> or, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. <laughs> By the way, it looks like he's using these butterfly playing cards, so you'll see the design on them soon. I used to collect playing cards, so it's just something I pay attention to. In fact, my first like 40 or so videos on YouTube were all playing card reviews. Anyways, back to his act. My guru's second piece of advice was, once again, work your magic with Alison Hannigan. Alison. Oh, boy. <laughs> Hi. Now, please, take this deck and... Go into the audience okay. to find a charming gentleman. Bye. <laughs> ah, let's see. I'll go here. Excellent. And let him pick a card. Now, sir, don't show the card to anybody, but look at it yourself and make sure you remember the name of your secret card. You got it? <laughs> yes? Yeah. Very good. Okay, now put it back in the deck and Ellison, please bring the cards back on stage. Thank you very much. It seems like pretty fair circumstances, I've got to say. Now, ordinarily, I would magically locate his card in the deck. But this is no ordinary card trick. Sir, what was the card? The Eight of Hearts. The Eight of Hearts. This is my guru's impossible card trick. So I will find the card in an impossible place. The past. Watch this moment from my first visit to Fool Us. Ben, 
What was your card? The Eight of Hearts. Coincidence? I think not. My guru was indisputably in control. But I have even more proof of his magnificence and something very special for Allison. Oh, great. <laughs> I mean, already that's really amazing, right? He handed her the deck of playing cards, she went to the audience, and the guy there selected the Eight of Hearts? What? I feel like he could stop there, and I'm already fooled. Unless he just somehow got really lucky and had that one clip ready to play in case the spectator selected that very card, but I consider that to be highly unlikely. My mind is already blown. What about you? Let's keep going. Oh, not the box. <laughs> you remember the last time you threw a dung beetle into my mouth? Yeah, it was so crunchy. <laughs> well, this time it's different. No. This time we're not going to put a buck in my mouth. No. -uh. <laughs> mm -mm. Nope. <laughs> there is my guru oh. in seven different stages of his life, oh, distinguished by seven different colors. <laughs> now, Alice, <laughs> pick one and put this buck into his mouth. That's not real, right? <laughs> it's just rubber. Now, in my last appearance, mm -hmm. in addition to feeding me a bug, my guru wanted you to pick a card and sit on it. Do you remember which card you sat on? No. I don't remember what I had bre for breakfast. Well, <laughs> let's take a look. Okay. Would you please show us, Allison? Isn't that curious? The Ace of Spades. Out of all the choices you had here, of all the gurus, you put it in the mouth of the one with the Ace of Spades on the back. Oh. Alison Hannigan, thank you. Thank you. Wow. Wow. Everything, it seems, happened for a reason. I mean, first I'm thinking multiple outs, but I don't know. It just seems very direct. Like he simply turned them around and they didn't seem to be complicated devices that could be switched out easily. They looked fairly permanent, like she just chose to put it in the one with the ace of spades. But we know in reality, she could have put it into any of the mouths, right? So the thing I'm wondering is, would he have had an alternate plan if she put it into a different mouth? Hmm, I guess we'll never know. Proceeding. But my guru told me to fool you this time, I needed to truly do the impossible. I love the challenge. Tell her, catch. Nice. Now take the cards out of the box and let Pen pick a card. And Pen, please show it to us all. It doesn't matter if I see it. It's the nine of hearts. Now tell her, cut the deck, complete the cut, take the top card, don't look at it, and keep holding it. And as an old Carpathian tradition dictates, throw the cards over your right shoulder for good luck. <laughs> now, Penn, tell her, do you believe you had a free choice of cards? <laughs> well, as we are learning, thanks to my guru, free choice is an illusion. Pen, you have the nine of hearts. Tell her, show us what card you have. The queen of diamonds. Please keep holding the cards like this in front of you facing me as we reveal the message. My guru left me in a box containing his most treasured possessions. These two photographs and a final fooling secret. Ken just looked at me and he didn't smile a bit. <laughs> if you fool them for the third time, he's going to be so mad at you. No, no. Yes, yes, no. trust me. I've seen it. It's not pretty. I have already prepared what I'm going to say if I don't fool them. And 
I honestly don't know what I would say if, if I did fool them. Oh, I think it's time. Let's see if they figured it out. All right, before we hear what Pin and Teller are gonna say, let me go ahead and give you my thoughts so far. For me, the last phase was the least impressive because he just played a video clip, right? I mean, he could have had a whole sequence of video clips and just had someone double click to select and play the correct one that had the predictions matching what Pin and Teller are holding. I mean, that would be difficult and require a lot of preparation, but that's a lot more understandable to me than the first two parts. I mean, I'm thinking for the first part, he didn't just hand Allison a deck that had like all one card, right? I think she would have noticed that. Someone would have noticed it. And for the second part where she put the rubber bug into one of his mouths, as I said, I don't really see how he did that either. Unless they were somehow really complicated digital boards that could change the image on the back of them. But I doubt it. I don't think it's an overcomplicated technical solution like that. Yeah, so I'm already stumped on the first two parts. I don't even know why he bothered to throw in the third part at all. Let's hear what Penn and Teller have got to say. Boys! You fooled us twice. We do not like that. I don't <laughs> like your stupid guru. Most of all, I do not like your stupid last name, <laughs> which I, I do not want to that. pronounce at our show. I do not want to say, here's someone who fooled us, Shpinskiska. <laughs> I don't want to put a P before an S, <laughs> ever. Pshinska. Pshinska. Ah, shut up. <laughs> First of all, you had Allison force a card without her knowing she was forcing a card. Shut up, I'm not finished. <laughs> that video of you holding up the cards, you shot that longer than Apocalypse Now. <laughs> you did hours and hours of shooting every possible combination. There was no card force here. There was nothing. There was just a sad, tired, pathetic Andre sitting in his room going, me, me. Me, 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 me. Probably putting a P before an S. Please, please, <laughs> You did that, didn't you? Didn't you? 22 hours, 2,704 times. Yes. Yeah. Wow. Don't applaud. That's good. Don't applaud. <laughs> There's one more trick. We're going to grab that card. Don't make a move. I'll hit you in the face. <laughs> We're going to take this card right here. Oh, boy. And if this card is double-backed or cheated in some way so that you did not fool us, maybe we can be friends again. <laughs> if this card is not gimmicked in some way, maybe you will trade a trophy for our friendship. You to hell. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. such a great performance and I love his stage presence and his personality. He has a very silly and offbeat, quirky sense of humor, as I've said already before. And I just really enjoy watching him. So it's amazing when you combine like a great stage presence with great magic at the same time and it's just enjoyable. I'm also glad I was not the only person who had a difficult time pronouncing his last name. <laughs> I already gave you all my speculations off the top of my head right now. I can't think of anything else. I feel totally bamboozled. What about you? Do you have any ideas as to how he accomplished this magic? Leave a comment below. And now to top things off, we will finish with an Aesop's fable. This time, instead of being random, I'll just go through until I find one that I like the look of. How about that? Okay, this one's super short. The Farmer and the Viper. This is chapter 157 for those of you following along at home, and let's dive right in. The Farmer and the Viper. One winter, a farmer found a viper frozen and numb with cold, and out of pity, picked it up and placed it in his bosom. Sounds like a safe thing to do. The viper was no sooner revived by the warmth than it turned upon its benefactor and inflicted a fatal bite upon him. And as the poor man lay dying, he cried, 
I have only got what I deserved for taking compassion on so villainous a creature. And the moral of the storyline is, kindness is thrown away upon the evil. This reminds me a lot about that uh, story about the frog and the scorpion, where the frogs, like the scorpion's riding on the frog's back to go across the river and he stings him and he's like, what did you expect? It's in my nature. And they both drown. But I could already tell something bad was gonna happen when he put that viper against his bosom. So, kindness is thrown away upon the evil. What do you think about that? Is that true? Hmm. Or can evil people be redeemed? That's the question. Are evil people just gonna be evil? Or do they have a chance to change their ways? If they have a chance to change their ways, maybe kindness is not thrown away upon the, them. The evil. But if you believe that people typically don't change in a significant way, and you have identified them as being evil from your perspective, then perhaps it's best not to waste your effort on these villains. I don't know, sometimes I feel like I go through the effort to provide someone with uh, advice or some information, and they kind of just don't pay attention or ignore it. And I think, why did I even bother to spend my time? So that's kind of similar. Yeah, I guess it's kind of like, don't be surprised if a person behaves how you have already identified them to be. Don't be so optimistic towards other people's character that you put yourself in jeopardy. And that's all for the book story time. Did you have any other interpretations? Do you have any other life experiences you can share that relate to this story? Feel free to leave them in a comment below. Thank you so much for joining me and for watching this video. If you can, please hit the like button. It really helps a lot. Smash the notifications and subscribe to the like and do all that stuff. Recommend this video to a friend. Anyways, I hope you're being safe with all the craziness going on in the world right now. Don't get hit by the second wave of corona and enjoy your time on this earth. I'll see you next time. Yep.